Hello and welcome to another video blog from home and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about three health conditions to watch out for in the menopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. When I was going through the perimenopause, I found it really frustrating because there was nothing out there. I could find very little information about what symptoms to expect, what could go wrong, what I needed to watch out for and how to look after myself well. One of the great things today is that there is so much more research going on in the menopause, looking at menopause symptoms, also looking at symptoms that may be associated but not caused directly by the menopause. So I thought today what I would do, I have covered these subjects before, but I thought I would just go over them and update them a little bit. The problem here is that certain health conditions look so much like the menopause that the menopause gets blamed for them and they get ignored in any health checks or any programs that you need to be looking at in order to keep yourself healthy. So let's have a look at them today. Number one is heart disease. There's new research coming out now that shows how falling oestrogen in the menopause and postmenopause can affect the heart. Oestrogen helps to keep our blood vessels elastic. It helps to open them up and when our oestrogen falls this can have quite an impact on the elasticity of the little blood vessels in the heart so our heart muscle itself ends up getting less oxygenated it gets less nutrients and these both can affect heart function itself so this is nothing to do with high cholesterol it's purely the effect that falling oestrogen and low oestrogen can have on our heart. Problem is that symptoms of heart disease, which I'm just going to tell you, are they just complete a total menopause picture. Mm -hmm. So the symptoms that we would be looking at are things like high blood pressure, fatigue, palpitations, you might find that your heart misses a beat, and this is often um, misinterpreted as stress palpitations rather than actual heart function itself. You can get swollen ankles, you can break out in a sweat, you can get hot flushes, you can get night sweats, you can get digestive problems, which I thought was a, a really interesting one. You can get headaches, you can get loss of concentration, you can get brain fog, and you can also find that it gets very uncomfortable, just a general discomfort if you lie on your left side when you go to bed. What can also happen is that if you do the slightest little bit of exercise, such as run for the bus, carry some heavy shopping, or even walking up and down the stairs, you'll find that your heart seems to go into overdrive and you find you can get really breathless as well. So if you have this kind of menopause picture, it's really important to get all of this checked out by your doctor. For self-help tips, I've already done a blog on how to look after your heart in the menopause, so you can click onto that for lots more detail. But the main things is check your diet, look at fish oils, look at magnesium, and um, just some sensible exercise on a regular basis. Condition number two is high blood pressure. So this is often linked to heart disease, but it can be something that happens on its own. Again, because falling oestrogen will affect the blood vessels themselves, the heart can have to work a lot harder to get the blood through the body because the main arteries and, and the little arteries are not opening up to accommodate the blood that's flowing from the heart. Also high blood pressure can be caused by stress and anxiety and again you know who of us are not stressed in in day-to-day -day life and what's going on just now but also the hormonal changes 
will put extra pressure on your nervous system and that can also result in high blood pressure as well. High blood pressure symptoms, sometimes there's very few. So this is why it's really important in the menopause and postmenopausal that you get your blood pressure checked regularly. Now, I do not mean buying a blood pressure machine and taking your blood pressure every day because that's going to cause more anxiety. But see your physician or your pharmacist maybe once every six months just to get a regular checkup. What can happen with high blood pressure? You can get dizziness, you can get the headaches, you can sometimes get swollen ankles, you can get the fatigue and you can also get palpitations if you start to get that little bit extra anxiety. But again, this particular picture, get this checked out by your doctor first. I have also written um, a video blog on this and other ways that you can just look after your blood pressure. So if you're interested in that one, please just click on the link. And number three is diabetes. In the menopause, one of the things that happens is that our insulin control or our insulin balance becomes much less effective. And this can lead to either pre-diabetes or diabetes. And all that happens here is that our blood sugar levels rise too quickly, the insulin can't cope with it efficiently enough and if left then this could lead to the, the condition of diabetes itself. With this particular condition symptoms again can vary, you can get flushes, you can get sweats, you can get tingling especially in the, the lower legs and the feet and sometimes the hands, you can get excessive sweating, you can get fatigue, excessive thirst and also needing to go to the toilet an awful lot and sometimes you can also get that weight gain around the middle or the spare tire. So again with this one if your symptoms fit this particular picture please check with your doctor first but I have also posted a video blog on how to control your blood sugar levels a little bit better during the menopause. So I hope you've enjoyed this one it is a serious one because one of the things we are finding over the years is that more and more women are coming to us with these particular symptoms. They are either ignoring them or they are being missed when they're going for health checks. So if you do go to your doctor, um, just make sure that you ask for a follow up with all these tests so that they're not being missed and then you find maybe five or six years down the line, your condition has worsened. If any of you have any tips on these, if any of you have had any experience with any of these and what you've done to help yourself, we would love to hear about it. And until then, I will see you next week for another A. Vogel Talks Menopause.